So the second of our three hydration reactions is called oxymercuration demercuration. And this is the first time we've encountered something where we've got sequential steps. So here's step one and step two. Uh, writing in that number one and number two is absolutely imperative. So uh, what this actually means is that we're going to add this mercuric acetate and water in step one to our alkene. We're going to let it react. We're going to purify the result. And to that purified result, we're then going to separately add sodium borohydride. So these are separated into two different time points, if you will. So if you forget the one and the two, it means you just mix the mercuric acetate, the water, and the sodium borohydride all together, all at the same time, and you're definitely not going to get the result that you want. Now, it turns out that in step one, we're going to add an OH, an oxygen, and a mercury, hence the name oxymercuration. And in step two, we're going to replace that mercury with a hydrogen, so the term demercuration applies. Now, it turns out our mercuric acetate is going to dissociate to some extent. So and we're going to get this lovely cation, and we're going to get this anion, and the anion we don't really care about, but the cation will become relevant here in a second. So it turns out we talked about that uh, our alkenes pi electrons are going to be the nucleophile in the first step of every one of the mechanisms we know, so we'll start there. Uh, and then it turns out that, that alkene looks and says, okay, who's electron deficient? Who's a good electrophile? Well, that is definitely our mercury cation here. So not only is it a, a cation, but it's a metal, which is really low in electronegativity and very electron deficient in this case. And our Nucleophile is very excited about that. So in this case, first step is we're going to come and attack the mercury. So if we kind of take a look at what this might look like it's forming, it'll make it make a little more sense what we're about to do. So in this case, way off to the side here, I'm going to attach that mercury to the less substituted side. That way we get the more substituted carbocation. The problem is that this reaction doesn't actually form a carbocation. If you look down here at the other characteristics in the table, it forms a three-membered ring intermediate we call an, a mercurinium ion. Well, it turns out that mercury is a big, fat, heavy metal, has a lone pair of electrons, and he's like, whoa, 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 don't form that carbocation, buddy. I got you covered. I'll form a bond not just to the less substituted carbon, but I'll form a bond to the more substituted carbon as well. Well, it turns out, though, that this doesn't actually happen in two steps. It all happens simultaneously. So the mercury comes back and bonds to that more substituted carbon at exactly the same time. And so in this case, we're going to form bonds to mercury from both sides of what used to be the alkene. And that's going to leave this mercury still having a positive formal charge. So it turns out that positive formal charge is shared a little bit on the secondary carbon and a little bit on the primary carbon. Uh, but because primary carbocations are not as stable as secondary, we'll find out there's more of that partial positive charge on that secondary carbon. That'll become relevant here in the next step. So in the next step here, water is going to come along, and water could attack either one of these partially positive carbons to open up this ring. I like to think Mercury's like, hey, hey, this is temporary, though. I need my electrons back eventually. Uh, in this case, he's going to attack the more substituted side. We said that that more substituted side of the ring has uh, a greater partial positive charge. And what that means is that our nucleophile water, in this case, can attack it with a lower activation energy. So, and that's going to open up our ring here. So our three-membered ring that was very short-lived, uh, but it helped us avoid having a carbocation. And uh, at least, at the very least, everybody's got a filled octet in the structure, so it's definitely more stable than a carbocation. Uh, when you attack a three-membered ring, it turns out you've always got to attack it from what we say the back side, just kind of like essentially exactly analogous to a backside attack in an SN2 reaction. And so in this case, we're going to attach our HgOAC on one side. We'll attach our water on the other. And as you might recall, you never want to end a step with an oxygen with three bonds and a plus charge. That thing is a very good acid. And so if you ever get there, you're going to have another water molecule come along. So and it doesn't have to be water, it's just whatever your solvent is, and water's our solvent in this case, and you'll do a proton transfer and deprotonate it. And in this case, then, we've got this guy. We've got now an OH. We formed a molecule of H3O+. Plus. So, and that is the end of step one. So step one is now complete, and we now move on to doing step two. You do not need to know the mechanism for step two for most classes. Uh, in fact, we're not completely positive on the mechanism for step two, so uh, I kind of find it hard to believe that somebody would require you to know something that we don't for sure know. Uh, but in this case, the net result in step two is that we're going to replace the mercury with just simply a hydrogen. So that's our net result. So you definitely probably have to know, you probably are responsible and on the hook for the mechanism in step one, but not for step two. Uh, in this case, the two carbons that became sp3 hybridized, neither one is a chiral center. So uh, we're going to get a single achiral product in this case. So 
I talked about attacking that three member room from the backside. Didn't end up mattering in this case. Again, our stereo specificity really comes to matter when you have uh, two chiral centers formed. But in this case, whenever you tack a three membered ring, you have to attack it from the opposite side. And therefore, the two things that end up attached end up on opposite sides. That's the nature of an anti stereo, uh, stereo specificity. Uh, so anti addition. So all of the anti additions we look at are all going to be the result of a three membered ring intermediate being attacked from the backside. So one thing to note about this, we said we've got this mercurinium ion instead of a carbocation. So this also goes Markovnikov, just like acid catalyzed hydration did. The big difference is without a carbocation intermediate, this will never undergo rearrangements, something we have to consider with acid catalyzed hydration. So because they're both Markovnikov, for some alkenes, if there's no favorable rearrangement, they'll give the same product generally. But if there's a favorable rearrangement, uh, Acid-catalyzed hydration will proceed through that rearrangement. This reaction, oxymercuration, demercuration, will not.